now you can do it all from home with the world's number one selling home computer Packard Bell wouldn't you rather be at home First up this morning is a delightful looking Packard Bell Legend Supreme 1611. Uh, it's got 166 megahertz Pentium, 16 megs of RAM, built in video, uh, designed for Windows 95 and MSN. I will open this up and see what's going on inside. Maybe it's worth taking. Pretty darn clean inside. Uh, we've got our CPU. It's a riser plate PCI setup. And this modem sound card game card all in one is pretty kind of cool and en endemic to Packard Bells at the time. Um, I think I'm going to take this home and rescue it. Hello, everyone, to our second Packard Bell rescue attempt. We were working on a Pentium 60 system yesterday, got it all cleaned up, but unfortunately it fails to boot. And we'll save that for another day. This one, however, is a Packard Legend Supreme 1611. It is a Pentium 60, um, excuse me, a Pentium 166, no MMX. I'm not sure about how much RAM, I think it's 16 megs of RAM. It did come with a 16x speed CD-ROM, and I was missing and missing these two face plates. What I might wind up doing is attempting to fit face plates from another system in here, and maybe hot glue them in place if the retention mechanism is different. This will be uh, later on down the road on this project. Right now I want to get the case off, just take a look at the guts real quick and talk about what we're going to do. This is one of those funky Packard Bell designs and as you can see right here we have a Seagate DVD, excuse me, a Seagate IDE hard drive and we have a little motherboard tucked in there. We have a light on power supply. The back of the case by the way, I did boot this. It does boot. The back of the case has that integrated OEM type motherboard setup where we have the PS2 ports. We have evolved now. We have two USB ports. Yay. Parallel serial. We also have a multifunction 16 bit ISA card which has a fax modem and sound card built in. We'll get that out later and take a look at the chipset on this sound card. And then we have the actual motherboard, which has integrated S3 Trio 64 graphics. I'm not sure how much RAM, probably one mega RAM on the motherboard. We do have PCI and ISA slots. And then we have the CPU and heatsink. We're gonna get this taken apart, get it all cleaned up, and then talk later about the damages that were found on the case when we pulled it out of the dumpster and what we're going to do to try to get it back up to its former glory. Let's take a look at the condition of the thermal paste under our CPU. We're going to gently take off the heat sink. I'm just going to push down and then gently give it a little tug outward. There we go. I really want this system to survive. All right. No paste, just uh, kind of a thermal pad. I'll replace that with paste. Get a razor blade and razor blade that off. Take a look at the socket 7 CPU. That was a stiff arm. You can tell this hasn't been opened in a long time. And we've got our Pentium 166. I really 
wood since I can change the jumper settings here and I can change it to a maximum of a three um, so I can change the um, ah, losing my mind uh, the steps on it to uh, to a 3x and then a 66 megahertz would get me 198 megahertz which is essentially a uh, Pentium 200 front side bus speed uh, on the 66 megahertz bus and this motherboard probably would support that. I believe I'm going to try that. Uh, but that's a really nice Pentium 60, 166, I have to admit. And everything else about the motherboard, everything's pretty darn clean. Um, no real concerns or complaints about how everything looks. Everything just looks nice. That would help if I put that in correctly, wouldn't it now? There we go. Just need, uh, I think, some better thermal paste when we put in that hotter CPU. We had a little change of plans during the middle of our restoration here. We actually switched colors from a more beige, like this Gateway 750 Select, back to the Packard Bell Gray. Let's talk about the Packard Bell Gray. As we saw on the video for the XL, and you can see how nice we got that original gray color, we used what's called perfect gray. And uh, that is a Rust-Oleum color. Again, perfect gray. And that's in a, it's more of a, that's in a matte. And I want to show you how close we got on the color match for this because I'm actually rather proud of it. If we look at the front panel, for the Packard Bell. You can see the Packard Bell lettering. I know it's a little janky. I still have to uh, smooth out those lines, but that gray around the Packard Bell was the original color, and the power button is still the original color. Now, when you move out a little bit, it really is a remarkable match, and we were very lucky to find that color. And then we have the outside of the chassis. We have the back of the chassis, which we did not paint at all. And then we have the, um, the side panels. And we went with the darker gray, like we did again on the XL. I just have to remember how it all goes together. But the next time you see this, it will be put back together. Here we are with the final product. We got the gray as close as we could. Pretty darn close, if you ask me. We darkened up the side bottom panels a little bit. Again though, with the same motif that they originally had on it. And she boots and she runs great. Let's walk around the back. Back looks good, everything's clean. And right now it is plugged in and working. I'm going to demonstrate. We'll turn on our monitor. Jiggle the mouse. And we are in Windows 95, Packard Bell style. Take a look at that Packer Bell style. Look at that. Original Packer Bell wallpaper. Where are you going to get that, folks? Sorry, it uh, doesn't always want to stay in focus. And why don't we try a little Doom 2 -age while we're at it?
Let's talk about Doom 2 while we're uh, enjoying the sound effects. Does anyone remember how we used to play this game when we had a Pentium 166? And another Pentium 166? But no Ethernet or token ring networking. How did we used to do that? Well that, this guy versus this guy will be one of our next videos.